our first interview today on Bridges will be outside of the studio and I'll sit down with Karen Whiting and talk about her book, The Gift of Bread. Then we'll come back into the studio and meet a mom who works with moms of young children to help them learn how to avoid mommy burnout. Karen, I am so glad to have the opportunity to talk to you today, even if it is in the middle of a hotel lobby <laughs> at, a, at a writer's conference. Karen, uh, I love your book, The Gift of Bread, Recipes for the Heart and Table. Tell me a little bit, because as I looked at this, bread has meant a lot to you in your life. Tell me about that. It has. I grew up with grandmothers and a mother who were always making breads. Mm -hmm. And they were doing more than making bread. My mother would time it so when we came in on a blustery day, she would just be pulling the Irish bread out of the oven and we would smell that and we'd sit and talk because we sat around the table. My father at the end of the meal would butter his bread. It was like the way to complete a meal for him. Sit back and ask us how the day went. Mm -hmm. my, one of my grandmothers had a calendar she kept that she would show me when I said to her, why do you always make at least two loaves of bread? Mm -hmm. She said, there's always someone who needs bread. Oh. And she would circle a month and six months after somebody had a death in the family and bring bread to them both times. And so I learned the importance of bread for fellowship with people and bread as a gift for people. Yeah, so you have a lot of really great, very comforting memories that go along with bread. Yes. Um, tell me about, because this is recipes for the heart and table, mm -hmm. so much of what you do is really about bringing the family together. Yes. And you also talk in the book, you kind of compare bread to Christ and, and it, it brings some spiritual examples. Tell me about that. Yes. Well, Jesus is the bread of life and because of that, I love that illustration throughout the Bible, the Old Testament with the bread of presence, the New Testament of what Jesus said that I started delving into. What are the ingredients of bread and how does that remind me of Jesus? Mm -hmm. So I looked at the wheat. He compared himself to a grain of wheat that had to be buried yeah. to produce much. Uh, he compared uh, a lot of things in life, and we, uh, the mustard seed and other things, but I also looked and said, but you know, oil that we use in bread, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is the image in the Bible. Honey that we use as bread, well honey is, the word of God is sweeter than honey in the honeycomb. Amen. And there were so many things that I understood the characteristics of Jesus more as I looked at the ingredients. Mm. And then I also looked at how we become more Christ-like and compared that to the making of bread, even that punching down we do after it <laughs> rises. And I think, doesn't that happen to us? Yes. We get so puffed up with pride because we think we're doing great, and we get punched down we and do. humbled again. <laughs> we do, we do, and yet, that punching down, you know, after it rises and all of that, it is all for a purpose. It's not yes. that God is out to punish us or to make us miserable. <laughs> He's working with us to get those things like pride and arrogance, if we'll yield to him, he's getting those out of our lives so that we can be more Christ-like. Yes. Now, in the book, each chapter has some really neat things. What are the components of each chapter? Well, it begins with a heartwarming story about bread. Mm -hmm. I was surprised I had as many stories as I did. <laughs> but when you have a lifetime of bread, it, uh -huh. you do. Yes. And then there's biblical insights into bread in the Bible. Then there's either recipes or a little list of uh, how uh, tips on how to make bread, how to make a yeast bread work, how to do quick breads, or tips on serving the bread, yeah. and even preserving the bread. And then there's, uh, after that, a little morsel of bread, which is a little thought to go away with and think about. Yeah. Now, uh, I love bread, and I've never met a carb that I didn't absolutely love. <laughs> Just love bread. And, but I love how you had an inspirational story in each chapter. Share with me just a story that was is particularly heartwarming for you out of your book, The Gift of Bread. Right, well we mentioned Irish bread, but the story in there on Irish bread is, I had a group of scouts, my husband and I were taking on the Appalachian Trail backpacking, mm -hmm. and it got rainy and it got drizzy and cold, and we found some shelter, and we sat down and they all looked at me, so I pulled out a loaf of Irish bread, <laughs> and they ate this up so quick, and then they sat there looking really downcast saying, 
there's not even a crumb left. Oh. And we sat back for a minute or two. I looked at my husband and I nodded, and he took out another loaf of Irish bread from his pack. <laughs> and they were like, oh, wow. <laughs> and they ate that, and then they were satisfied, and we continued on, but they were just, their spirits were lifted because we had this surprise for them. Yeah, you know, there's something about, I think, something being homemade. There's something very comforting about bread yes. um, and so just that you were able to surprise them <laughs> so uh, you were working with some scouts yes okay and they were going on a trip yeah we were on the Appalachian Trail backpacking <laughs> oh and you and your husband brought the surprise of bread yes so this was a group of girls and so yes we had that bread we didn't tell them ahead we were doing it and so they really had no clue and we just thought we'd find the right moment when this would mm -hmm. be needed. Yes, so you really were intentional about bread and about, you know, giving yes. gifts and that sort of thing. Yes, I do. And it doesn't matter where I'm living. Every time I moved, even last year was my first Christmas in Florida, I make bread for my neighbors at Christmas time and bring it around to them. Mm -hmm. And it's a, just a great opening to start sharing and get to know them a little bit better. Yeah. It kind of opens that door. Now, it, the book is The Gift of Bread, and it's recipes for the heart and table. You've got some really good recipes in here. Are these all things that you've tried? Oh, yes, I've made everything in there. <laughs> uh, many times over on some of them, my honey of an egg whole wheat bread, which I, I really like that it has honey and milk and egg in it. Those are some good, healthy ingredients. Um, I've made that for over 40 years. Wow. When I put pictures of that up, my friends from places I've lived said, oh, and I'm making that too because you gave me the recipe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's been a fun thing to share. Uh, yeah, the milk and honey, there's a new study in the last few years that uh, actually shows that that combination is really good for us and helps us sleep. Really? And it really helps um, us, uh, our bodies absorb the calcium more and things okay. to have that combined. And that's honey and milk? <laughs> honey and milk. I didn't know that. That's <laughs> wonderful. I like both of those too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about the gift of bread, recipes for the heart and table. What would be, if someone went out, Karen, and got this book, what would some of the takeaways be from it? For me, I think some of the takeaways should be the memory of how bread brings us together with fellowship. That some of it should inspire them to know Christ more and understand that there's a purpose of bread in the Bible. God told Adam he had to work for his bread because mm -hmm. we need it for sustenance. There's sure. a lot of nutrients in it we do need. That he used it for the bread of presence to remind his people of his presence and not only did they have to put fresh bread out every week they had to bake it and yeah. they were large loaves that everyone would have been smelling that aroma to give us that presence of Christ and then the fellowship of breaking bread with one another you know in that the, the covenant relationship with God fellowship with us it's kind of the shape of the cross up yes. with God together with others yeah. and we need all of that yes. to live a strong and a mature and a Christian life right. and fellowship is just so important to all of us. And I think sometimes in our busy lives, you know, that we can let that fellowship go, or we could even look at the gift of bread and think, oh, you know, but I'm just too busy to, ba to, bre to bake bread. What would you say to that? I would say there's a couple things there. There are recipes that just use refrigerated dough. Yes. You don't have to go <laughs> bake it from scratch. And there are times you can make it as a family or a friend activity to bake together. Mm -hmm. You know, well, I, before I came here, I left Florida early and I stopped at a friend's house and she said, oh, I love your book. Can we bake some of the bread? And we baked it together. Yeah. You know, that's fun. I bake it with my grandchildren all the time. And so there is that, just make it Put it on your calendar to do it as something for the family. And certainly, I one of my purposes with family is to gather together and have meals together. Yes. Bread in my life helped to slow down, savor the taste, and really spend time talking more. Yeah. It, well, and I love that you put recipes for the heart on the table. And, you know, when you think of family time and meals and that coming together, mm -hmm. research even shows that young people that students do better in school if families have meals together yes 
They do, continually. And that's because they get to go over their day. They have someone, they have their mother and father listening to them, their parent who's in the house, uh, understanding what were the ups of the day that we can celebrate, what were the downs of the day that we can commiserate and give you a hug for. It. Right. And that helps them process their life, really. Absolutely. And it, it's this really safe place. And it just takes us being intentional enough to say that I want to take the time to do that. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I love that you mentioned that you've got some bread recipes with ref refrigerated dough. I tried. <laughs> uh, the crescent rolls that uh -huh. you have in there with the chocolate chips and the coconut, was that something that you did with your children? It is, yes. I did that with the children. I would often, there's a meal I make in there and I talk about stuffing them with ham and cheese and broccoli or mm -hmm. mushrooms, but I would put a few of those aside to make some dessert ones and put chocolate chip or coconut and nuts and any of these type of dessert things for them to have afterwards too. And So we just would have fun with that and it made it for an easy day when everything was so busy I could just pull something out and do it quickly, but we could still sit down and eat something that was fresh from the oven. Yeah, and, and just the, the smell yes. of bread in the oven is just wonderful, and the idea that we're bringing our families together to make these memories is really what it's all about, whether it's refrigerated dough or you made the whole thing from scratch. What else would you like to say about your book, The Gift of Bread? We've got just a couple of minutes left. What would you like people to know about the book? I would just like them to know that, you know, bread is, and the gluten is still very good. It's very nutritious for you. Mm -hmm. And the spiritual bread of life of Jesus is very important to us. Mm -hmm. You know, we need Jesus every day. So when you say the Lord's Prayer and say, give us this day our daily bread, mm -hmm. think of Jesus. That's the daily bread we really need the Amen. most. Yeah. And he is, you know, he is the bread of life. Mm -hmm. And when you think about that statement, you know, being in the Bible and what he's saying, and then that we have that physical bread, I believe he's really speaking to us in ways to help us to understand. Is that right? I think so. Mm -hmm. I think those illustrations are in the Bible for a purpose because that is what helps us remember. It's what touches our heart because of those memories we associate with it mm -hmm. in our lives. Yeah, because you know, you think of him as the bread of life. He is our sustenance. Like yes. he spiritually and just in this world, we can't make it without him. We need him and his presence every day. Yes. I want to thank you so much for coming out today and for being oh, on the Monica, British show. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. Yes. You know, I know we're in a hotel lobby for <laughs> a Speakers and Writers Conference, but this is just wonderful. So thank you for sharing. The book is by Karen Whiting, and it is The Gift of Bread. So stay with us. We'll be coming back with more very soon. You can purchase a copy of today's show for $15. Call us at 615-754-0039 or send a check to the address on the screen. Please mention the program number on the screen. The blood of Christ is the only cure. It gets down to the root of every single thing that ails us. There's not an addiction, there's not a generational curse, there's not any root of sin, there's nothing that the blood of Jesus cannot cleanse. Visit monicaschmelter.com to schedule Monica to speak at your event. If you're just joining us today on Bridges, we are back in the studio and on the Bridges set. And I am excited for you to be able to meet Shelly Jeff Jeffson. And Shelly, good to have you Thank today. Thank you, Monica. It's so good to be here. You know, in the earlier segment, Shelly, we were kind of talking about hospitality and the gift of bread and how that all ties in with family. And it's so similar to what you're doing in your family and also with your blog, A Family Meeting. Let's start with a little bit about Absolutely. you. If you tell me a little bit about your family and just your passion for helping moms with young children. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've been married, it'll be 15 years in June. Congratulations. Thank you. That's kind of a monument, I think. I think monument, miracle. Yeah, yeah these days, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. pretty awesome. Congratulations. 15, thank you very much. 15 years in June, we um, have four children. Four amazing children, um, 
and are building a little, I guess you could call it a mini farm, homestead of sorts. <laughs> on seven and a half acres. I actually grew up on 52 acres. So for so, you, seven and a half acres is small, but small. for someone like me, I'm like seven and a half yeah. acres, that's yeah. awesome. It's all relative, it's yeah. all perspective, yes. So, um, you know, when we got married, I really wanted to not have the responsibility of all the property and mm -hmm. it was just us so it was it was easy to move away from that for a little while but since then one child after another after another <laughs> we've found ourselves really longing for that just wild and free mm -hmm. you know lifestyle and want to give our children a portion of that so that's that's what we're doing these days everything's kind of geared and focused towards that um you know the wild and free and the property and the responsibilities and we're building a barn and we have eight chickens. Oh my goodness, oh, eight we love. chickens. Yes, we love them, <laughs> we have chickens. And my, uh, my daughter recently bought a horse. That's why the barn's going up. We told her, you buy the horse, we'll build a barn. She bought the horse, the barn's going up. Like she bought the horse chickens. with her own her money? Her own money, yeah girl, oh. she bought it with her own money. Yeah. That's really yeah. wonderful. Yeah. So that's where we're at right now. That's our little family. Yeah, building our little mini Doing farm. a lot of really great things. Thank One of the you. things when I think about country and farm, and I know that uh, farming, that it's a lot of work and there's responsibility, and you even mentioned that with the land, but I always think about how peaceful it is to be in the middle of what God made. Absolutely. And so you wanted to have that for your children. And so part of, and, and how I met you, was learning a little bit about your blog, a family meeting, mm -hmm. and your heart really, because what you're describing for so many people would just seem so idyllic, you know, mm -hmm. beautiful mom and dad and four children in a farm. And yet so many people, Shelly, even though they love their children, it's such a struggle for manners, for all of that. Tell me about your blog and how it kind of helps us with those yes. areas. Yes, it can be a struggle, mm -hmm. but it doesn't happen. It doesn't get to that point overnight. Yeah. Yeah. A family meeting blog was birthed out of just different areas of my life that the Lord had been cultivating. I've always loved to write and competed in writing competitions when I was little. And I'm the second youngest of a combined seven. Wow. Yes. So you come from a lot of yes. property and a lot of siblings. Yes. Okay. Children, mm -hmm. always children. And um, I started very early doing my part to help my older siblings care for those children. And so I grew up with both those things and I started my a personal blog in 2009 and then last year in 2017 the Lord really showed me how I could take both of those areas mm -hmm. and use technology to kind of marry them and and start a family meeting blog and the purpose of the blog is like you said to help moms not wake up one day and feel that struggle mm -hmm. and that stuck spot um, because it doesn't happen overnight. No, and but it feels like that's yeah, what happens. Yeah. Like I can't tell you how many moms that I've talked with, that, that I've been friends with, that I've met at church who say, everything was wonderful when the kids were little. But then one day mm -hmm. I got a teenager in the house mm -hmm. and it all changed. And you know, the thing is, you do become a teenager on one birthday, like in one day. <laughs> but that stuff is really like, you know, it's, happening over mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And I think we'd all wanna know if it's possible, like how not for that to happen. Yeah, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> and I think we get caught up in the, like you use the word idyllic, mm -hmm. but because we use that word in, oh, things can't be idyllic and you know, perfection is impossible. No, it's not. But we don't wanna let that become a crutch either for just accepting. Right negativity or accepting, um, well, you know, motherhood's just hard and kids are just kids and, yeah. you know, so this behavior is just how it's going to be. The blog is really to give moms a resource, a trusted resource <clears throat> from another mom who's gone before them and has a significant measure of success, <clears throat> excuse me, to offer, okay, let me show you how I got here. Mm -hmm. uh, let me show you the things that we did early on intentionally with babies, with one, two, three, four, and five-year-old, so that when you arrive at those harder parts, because it only gets harder. It does. It only gets harder Absolutely when you have a child who's now capable of logic and reasoning and all these mm -hmm. complex cognitive things and 
thought processes, it's harder mm -hmm. than the baby or the one or two or three year old right. who's a lot more cause and effect. So when you just really take advantage of those early years and lay a foundation that's really rock solid, <clears throat> when the harder stuff comes along, you've been building a foundation since the right. beginning and it's just easier to deal with. Absolutely, and and I and I understand what you're saying in your heart, and there's certainly there's no recipe or formula to uh, avoid all of mm, the teenage no. problems and the challenges. What we're talking about are wh what kind of a good foundation can we lay, so that as challenges happen, because they will, how how we can best deal with them, walk through with, walk through them, certainly. love our children, support what's good, and really squelch what's not from God. Absolutely. Because I think part of the thought is, well, you know, just rebellion and, you know, mass chaos in the house, that that's just, that's just normal and that's to be expected. And I'm sure there are days with four children, it might seem a little wild or a little frenzied, but it doesn't have to be outright rebellion and negativity Absolutely. in our home. In fact, mm -hmm. I don't see that anywhere in the Bible. Agreed. Mm -hmm. I see quite the opposite. Mm -hmm. Love your neighbor as yourself. Um, you know, Proverbs 22, 6 gives us a pretty clear instruction, train them up in the way they should go. And that verse encompasses so much more than we give it credit for. Yeah. Yes, training them up to know and fear the Lord is of utmost priority. But manners, um, putting others first, responsibility, helping them identify and nurture and cultivate their gifts and talents so that those gifts and talents can make a way for them yes. with jobs mm -hmm. and... Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. when they're older, that's all part of that scripture. That's all part of our burden. And, you know, I use the word burden kind of lightly because the truth is it's it's not always hard. Um, training and raising a child are hand in hand. The fun goes with the training. It's a yeah. daily thing. I don't, I would definitely not want a mom to get caught up in thinking that, um, well, if I train my child, I can't enjoy it's the opposite. Well, because here's the thing about that, that I think that w it's just really helpful <laughs> for us to understand what's really hard in life. And, and we all go through hardships. What's, what's really hard is living with the consequences of not doing things God's way. Certainly. That's really hard. The Bible says the way of the transgressor is hard. Now, we have some hard stuff. We have challenges, those kinds of things. But really, to come along with what you're saying I don't mean easy like in a oh, just easy, easy way, but it's much more fruitful and easier to do things God's way Absolutely. and more enjoyable to train children up right when they're young than to live with the consequences of when that doesn't happen. Absolutely. So tell me, Shelly, a little bit about the blog and a little bit about what this training looks like. Like, let's say there's a mom right now and she's got a couple of kids, you know, and they're still young, like maybe four and six. And it's wild. Yes. <laughs> Is it too late? Can you rein it back in? Oh, heavens no. Yes, you can rein it back okay, in. Okay, good. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. <clears throat> I would tell that mom, don't wait. You know, because what is it they say? The days are long and the years are short. To me, it's all short. It's yeah. just, life is just fleeting. You know, it is. It's You're just right. fleeting. It is. Um, and so don't wait. You know, be intentional. There's so many good resources available, but there can be all the good resources available in the world. And if you don't go to them, seek them and use and implement them, then there's nothing, right. it's not effective. You're just reading for fun. Mm -hmm. um, so visit a family meeting.com, go to focus on the family, Joe McGee ministries. All these are places that there's help and specific uh, practical instructions. That's Really, with the family meeting blog, I want practicality. Mm -hmm. I want actionable steps right. for that mom to be able to go specifically to something and say, okay, I'm having this problem. And, oh, look, she's given me a one, two, three for mm -hmm. how to get a better result. Right. Um, so, no, definitely help is within reach. And it, you just have to be intentional. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and I think for all of us, you know, especially believers in Christ, it's never too late to do the right thing. Absolutely. And we all, you know, the only thing we can do is start where we mm -hmm. are. We can't start with five years ago or six years ago or what we didn't know. And I love what you said, Shelley, about, you know, if you're just reading all this stuff, it's just reading for fun. If we're not doing anything about it, it's, it's like 
we have to give God something to work yeah. with. And that's our, our obedience in our action steps. Like, okay, I just read a family meeting and I've just learned, you know, if this is a challenge, I can try this. So it's one thing to know that, mm -hmm. but the power comes when we start to do that. Certainly. Yeah. Be doers. <laughs> I love that. Be a doer. Yes. Yes. yes we've yes. got to do it. So tell us what like, is there a time frame that you would put on it? Like if a young mom with young kids starts today, would she see instant results over time? How, how does it work? Let me tell you what my own family is experiencing right now, and maybe we can answer yeah. that question um, really effectively this way. It's both, depending on what it is you're trying to accomplish. We are right now in the midst of just an incredibly favored year. Mm -hmm. uh, my, I launched the blog last year. We continue to homeschool the kids. They're all having a great year. Just, we've seen breakthroughs in areas with reading and just different things that they're just thriving. That's wonderful. And um, it really has been wonderful. My husband's career is growing. He's traveling. Mm. He's excelling professionally. We're right, having the mini farm, putting up a barn, <laughs> adding animals all the time. Just all these wonderful, you know, just blessing, just the Lord's blessing. Up and it started 11 years ago, you know, yeah. with the, the kids. Um, we were sort of sitting back and looking at this year going, wow. And I can trace back a lot of the successes that we're having, say, with my oldest to things that we were intentional to do from the very beginning yeah. with him. However, if you have a child that is a baby, say you're a first-time mother with a baby who's not sleeping, I can give you a guide that will get results <laughs> within about four days <laughs> and you can be sleeping. I actually had a mom not that long ago call me just weeping because her child, mm. her new baby, she has a, an older baby and a younger baby and the baby wasn't sleeping. And she was just, I mean, exhausted doesn't even begin yeah. to, you know, she was just, she had no patience. She was getting mean and snappy during the day and couldn't deal with the older child. It was just awful. And she just called me crying and we laid out some steps and I told her, now you got to do it. Right. Do it exactly as I'm telling you. <laughs> I've done it. I've helped other mommies. Please trust me. And within a week or so, baby's uh, sleeping. That's miraculous. I'm, we are out of time and I'm so sorry because I could just l learn so much from you. And I know other moms could do, but thank you for coming. Absolutely. And for thank sharing. Thank you for having yes, me. Yes, I want you to check out this blog and, and uh, identify these resources and do at what you find in it. We've got to go, but we say goodbye and God bless you. Log on to www.ctntv.org where you can make a prayer request, view our program guide, see who's on bridges, or even watch one of Monica's latest teachings. Log on to www.ctntv.org. Prayer changes things. If you need prayer, write to the address on the screen. Call 615-754-0039 or email prayer at ctntv.org. For more information on a guest, visit our website, ctntv.org.